Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Napoleon Toll back again here with a new video. Um, in this case, we are doing uh, Shogun 2, Fall of the Samurai, and the mod is for this video um, Total Fox. Now, um, the official name is Scramble for the Far East, and it's basically a long story short, a mod in which the European factions are added in. Now, for those who are wondering, uh, what is uh, Fall of Shogun 2? Shogun 2 is basically a game that is set in the Sengoku Jidai era of Japan. Uh, Fall of the Samurai is an extension to that game that is set 300 years later, so during the Boshin War. And what is what is Total Thoughts? Total Thoughts is basically something that is a mod that as in the European factions. So you have Prussia, France, the United States. The Qing Empire, which is also in Asia, is not a European power, but it's in near Japan. And Korea, which is, once again, not a European power, but near Japan. So for this series, we are playing as Prussia, a country now will later form the German Empire, and one that wants to expand its colonial borders into Japan. We start the campaign off with um, an army led by von Schlossing Gute, and I'm pronouncing German terribly. Um, for the army itself, we have two marines, a lot of colonial infantry, and two colonial cavalry. Off the bat, um, and one artillery, six pounder colonial artillery. Now, as I would always do when I start a new campaign, is look at my neighbors. To, to the north, we have the Northern Alliance, which is an added in faction. To, to the east, we have the Aizu. And to the south, we have the Nakaoka. And uh, what am I doing as of right now? I am doing, and just moving my troops to the Aizu border. As a matter of fact, um, besides, before we do that, we have to check our diplomacy. So the Northern Alliance is, we can all trade with Aizu, Nagaoka, and the Northern Alliance, but I'm going to particularly choose the Northern Alliance, because it it has a massive border, and at the start of the game, they're pretty elite. So I'm going to ask for a trade agreement, military alliance, and break trade uh, alliance with the Aizu. And the reason is because I'm going to declare war on the Aizu. Now, why the Aizu and not Nagaoka? Well, um, Aizu in particular, because Nagaoka... Because um, I want to go east and go down south. Now, uh, because I already had an alliance with the Northern Alliance, they're going to join my war against Aizu. And you can see here, I'm just moving my troops to the border, uh, whatever I can do. Um, let's look at our army. Now we can actually recruit. Uh, we have three slots available. That means we can recruit along. Not a lot of armies, but just what is needed. We have lifeguards, which are the most elite units that we have. We then we have Hanoverian guards, which are not that elite. Hessian guards, grenadiers, Jaegers. Uh, Jaegers are basically light infantry. We have Hessian infantry, Wittenberg infantry, Brunswick infantry, Hanoverian infantry, infantry, so basically Prussian infantry, Nassau infantry, colonial infantry, and finally uh, Oldenburg infantry. Now, what am I going to produce? Off the bat, I'm just going to ask not for Colonial Infantry, because Colonial Infantry, although is the cheapest and with only one time to one, uh, one per turn, it is, uh, you know, 160, meaning uh, you're paying 85 Koku for um, less 40 units. That means the infantry is better. It is 5 Koku upkeep. More upkeep to upkeep, but it is more. So what I'm gonna do is gonna ask for uh, Prussian line infantry. I'm gonna have Brunswick uh, infantry and finally Hessian infantry. And what are we gonna do for buildings? What we can build is a fencing camp, a training camp, a basic injury, cottage infantry, police station, cannon range, and the last one is the public space, which of which um. The training camp and the fencing could give us some unique bonuses to public order, but we're gonna go for um, public space because we currently do not have. We need to get our happiness up. For for anything else, uh, not that much. We do have a pretty good economy in terms of um, research. We're just going to go for more happiness. And that is aesthetics, which gives us a plus one happiness and plus one knight leader honor, which in turn boosts the public order and uh, your diplomacy. 
our faction leader Zhu Frederick Albert, so we, I just call him Frederick Albert, we have Prussian discipline divide and rule the German Empire in Bismarck. Which is a lot. Um, Frederick Albert, we have Ralph as our son and heir. So, Ralph Albert. And we have a general who I we saw in the beginning with that massive army. Now the eyes are already at we're already at war of the Aizu. So we're gonna fast forward to next turn. And just to give you guys an exact thing of what we're looking at, these are all the factions on the top of top. That shows what exact factions there are. As you can see where we have the United States, Great Britain and, and the Qing Empire, along with Russia, Korea and the Netherlands. We do have an Aizu force moving up, and at first I I didn't know what to do, and then I realized it's only one unit, and to be exact, it's one unit of uh, literally cavalry of the general's bodyguard, um, which to be honest, I do not want to fight him because it, there is a risk of losing my general. Again, we're gonna end the next turn, and we're gonna just wash the factions. Uh, for those who don't know, the Northern Alliance has just been recently added in by the by the mod team, which kudos to them. Um, they've really been doing a very good job with the mod. I, I, I'm, I'm really impressed by almost everything they've been done, from the voices to the uniforms, most of which are historically accurate. Actually, no, all most all of them are historically accurate. Um, and with my new Prussian infantry and Brunswick infantry, we're just gonna prepare for the invasion. We're just gonna march to the Alsace border. As you can see, the Aizu only have one um, province, and that is Fukushima. Um, the Northern Alliance is mobilizing forces, but I, I do not they're not going to do much. It is definitely our war. In terms of anything else, I do want to produce some Wutenberg infantry. And I decided not to produce Jaegers, because um, Jaegers and Light Infantry have the exact same range, but Jaegers are just more accurate. Uh, and finally I decided to go for lifeguards, and lifeguards, like I said, is the best infantry that I can get. And it's probably the most scariest infantry on the battlefield. Going on, we're just looking at the... Factions again. Finally, is the next turn, and we're marching into Aizu lands. Um, as you can see, this is during winter, which means I will be taking uh, winter attrition. Now obviously, I do have another batch of units coming up, and I decided not to do tenement farms, which increase the wealth generated, because the reason is I'm spending almost all my money on the army. And in my, in my mind, if I spend a lot more money on army, and I bomb rush my enemies, especially in the beginning, you're going to have more income than from you building up. Obviously, um, building up is especially useful for the late game because that gives you a lot of money. Money that you will be really needing almost everywhere in your entire campaign. But once again, we're just ending the turn, and as you can see, once again, we are looking at a lot of factions. And hooray, it's spring, which means uh, we're not going to be taking attrition, and we're going to assault the uh, enemy castle. This is the siege of Aizu Wakiyama, and we start the battle with an artillery barrage. Sadly, that uh, shot that you saw did not fire because that was a dud. So, what are we going? We're gonna fire right now. Boom. Um, as you can see in the background, there is a lot of smoke. But as you can see in the background, there is a unit of cavalry coming straight at us. As a matter of fact, it's the general himself, the enemy general to be exact, the Aizu general. And I have him uh, waiting for him, a line of colonial infantry. They're gonna kneel and open fire right now. As you can see, the enemy cavalry is pretty much destroyed. Um, it still charges in because it is the general has pretty dang high morale. But because this unit is so small, it's not gonna do much. Uh, the general, uh, as you can see, another good aspect of uh, the creators net, uh, the mod editors net edit the thing in, is that they edited standards and flags. So as you can see, in this for this case, this unit, 
the the colors, which is the regimental colors, is the blue one, while the 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 country colors are on the right. The cl the colors the the standards for that particular faction. As you can see, the general has been destroyed by my infantry, and in order to finish him off, I just sent in my all my colonial cavalry and my general. Obviously, my general is not going to get any kills because most of I send in my colonial infantry first. Uh, what do we have for our army? We have colonial infantry with their standards and um, flags. Two units of them in the front lines. Um, as you can see, um, Prussian blue uniforms. Uh, we have the Prussian marines. As you can see, the colors, the standards for those and the colors. More Prussian marines. Uh, a lot more colonial infantry. And colonial infantry, in my terms, are the easiest to recruit but um, they are not that bad. I use them sort of like fodder units, but yeah. Especially in the late game. Uh, what do I have? I have my other general, my faction leader actually, Zu Albert, Albert Friedrich. And he is just moving through the forest as a reinforcement. As we can see here, this unit is the Brunswick Line Infantry. Uh, very interesting uniforms and historically accurate too. Uh, this is the Prussian Line Infantry with its standards and colors, which, as you can see, uh, for every unit, standards and colors are very different. And what are we doing right now? We're opening fire. As a matter of fact, this unit that is opening fire is, once again, Colonial Infantry. And another good interesting thing is that the mod adds in a lot of formations. The formation that you see right now is Fire by Rank. So essentially what it does is have the first rank pop up, go up, open fire, kneel down again, reload, and have the second rank open fire. Um, at most it's three ranks, but um, just for give you guys of what does fire fire by rank does not look like is this. This is not fire by rank. I put these guys on kneel fire, which is the first rank kneel, and the rest just open fire. This of course is um, firing at will essentially, but putting the front line kneeling. As you can see here, um, the enemy is getting pummeled, not only by artillery but by um, ammunition of all sorts and kinds. Um, just to give you guys, we we'll just keep firing away at that um, that enemy unit that is protected by the fortifications of the city that we're insulting. As you can see here, the enemy keeps moving up another unit, they're reforming their actually this um, levy unit, I believe. And they're just once again getting shot to pieces. Um, what is my artillery targeting? My artillery is targeting their gate, which I, as you can see is destroyed. What am I targeting now? I'm just targeting anything. And to get a, a bonus for me, uh, the enemy general has been shot dead. This is what happens when you put your general too close to enemy fire, he gets shot. And as you can see, um, in the meanwhile, my units are my my secondary army, my smaller army that is reinforcing reinforcing my main army is marching. And just to give you guys an idea of how far it is, this is how far it is. And to give you guys an idea of this is only halfway. That was we already marched halfway, so that's a long range. And as you can see, the enemy starts pulling up some militia, so actual infantry that can actually actually do stuff to my troops. But once again, um, you see these guys are not firing. As for the levy infantry, they too are not firing, and the reason is because my units are European, making them um, giving them extra range compared to regular Japanese levies and militia. As you can see, um, fire by rank is still in effect. And as you can see, sometimes some troops are not firing because they do not have the proper angles, which is really a problem. As you can see, um, with all my firing, there is not a lot of units dropping dead. There are some here left and right, left and right, but most of them are unscathed. Uh, most of the bodies that you see are from the levy unit and the dead general. So I decided to move up. You can see this unit is not on any formation and is just firing away at the enemy. 
the the unit on the left is charging through and it's not actually charging it's just going through the river the little stream that you see and it is gonna get fired upon and I believe um, when I was recording this um, there were only two guys who lost their lives in that entire volley that the enemy shot which is uh, just to show you what's the difference between this mod and regular Fall of the Samurai. So instantly we're just going to open fire. And this is point blank ring, so literally we're actually going to take some casualties left, casualties left and right because we are so close to the enemy. I figured out in this mod, the uh, closer you are, the deadlier it is for you and the enemies. And as you can see, we are just, um, we're getting pummeled, but so too are the enemy. Um, yeah. It's not a pretty sight for my men, but um, eventually I'm going to move up a lot of units and we're just going to open fire on that unit en masse. As a matter of fact, let's see what type of damage they've been taking. It's actually pretty, um, it's, it has increased since that when we last saw them. On um, that unit yeah, you see right there has been moving to my right and I'm just moving up uh, more colonial infantry and I am moving up my final line which is two marines and two colonial infantry and we're just gonna pummel this unit to death um what am I doing with my other unit well I am moving it to the right we are actually uh, trying to set this gate on fire and this is how setting the gate on fire works you literally have to um, how do I put it in a nice way? You have to throw torches at it. Tor torches, my bad. And here we go. The first wave of, the first volley of torches, I, I can guess. Uh, and it's uh, automatically, the gate is on fire. Now I'm just going to throw another uh, torch just to make sure. But on the other side, we are charging our cavalry in. And uh, all my units are firing at that poor line infantry at this point. Oh, sorry, militia. But at this point, the militia is routing. Uh, I'm charging my cavalry to disrupt the enemy formation. Obviously, my cavalry um, is gonna, isn't going to be doing the best because we are in a siege works. The enemy is going to respond to that by sending uh, uh, spear levies. And spear levies, like uh, most units, are quite bad. In this case, um, they're against cavalry, so I decided to pull out my cavalry. But not, but for some reason, my cavalry cannot would not move out. So uh, at this point, I'm just rapidly clicking um, orders to get have them get out, and finally they do get out. As you can see here, we have two marines on the left, and we have two units on the right uh, that are colonial infantry. I put the three units that were shooting at the beginning of the battle on the right on the right uh, to see near right next to the tower that we burn and literally in seconds I'm just gonna order to charge and we are just charging straight in and now you can hear some beautiful music it is actually a cadence so basically a cadence is where you it is like a fast forward ability um, that makes the unit fresh and basically it just makes them eager and gives them morale bonus I think and it basically just makes them extremely happy and they charge faster do everything faster and for this in this case the cadence is basically like um, a march yep as you can see our um, we are fighting in combat against uh, these spear levy our men um, seem to be doing quite well Finally, I decide to pull away a unit, um, it's Colonial Infantry, and I'm just going to have them go on the flank, and what I was intending is to have them shoot at them, but I decided yeah, not to, and then I just ordered them to engage in combat. As you can see, what this does is make their morale even more uh, brittle, because we are attacking them on the flank, and to make it even worse, we are going to be very soon shooting at them. I think it's right now we're going to be shooting at them. Yep, uh, the first shots are fired, and these guys are instantly routed. As you can see, as they are as they are uh, routing, we just keep shooting at them, which I eventually will turn off because we are getting some friendly fire. Um, yeah, so that's a big that's a problem. 
especially at the beginning stage of the campaign in which I need every soldier matters. We're going to keep on conquering the castle, and as you can see, Japanese castles are very large, and to give you an idea, this is a very small castle. Um, this is, uh, actually, in my mind, is a very small castle. We are burning the gate once again, and as you can see, some units are throwing um, very short, and they're not making their throw. They're the torches, thankfully, are not burning my own troops. But, yeah, we're just burning the, the fort. But uh, as I was saying, Japanese uh, towers and Japanese castles are pretty large. This one is a very small one, and as you can see, it's already pretty big. Um, and uh, we're just going to move in with my unit of Colonial Infantry. And once again, we're just going to move up right next to the fort and we're just gonna attempt to burn it as you can also hear we're, we are playing cadences which is why it, and as you can see we are our, our, our unit is moving faster so once they group up we're just gonna throw torches again as you can see we have two flags like like I said before we have two flags the one the blue one for this in this case is the the regimental flag or we call the regimental colors, and the uh, what the white the white one with the Prussian eagle on it is actually um, the, the state colors. In this case, the state is Prussia. So we're because this is colonial infantry, and this is we are playing as Prussia. So yes, this is colonial infantry. Brunswick infantry and Wittenberg infantry have their own uh, colors and standards, uh, and that that is what. That is what makes um, playing as Prussia so unique. You can play as so many different. Um, you have so many different variety in your units. All of the units are uh, stats are almost identical, but it's just it's just it's just interesting to see so many different unit variety. Uh, once again, we are also bringing this gate, uh, this, this gate, Duke Zach. This is the into the inner keep, and <laughs> once again, we are marching through. With our um, standards, the uh, regimental standards in the front, followed by the rest of the troops, which is pretty interesting. Um, is it is how it's done historically? Because as you can see, because uh, units will follow their regimental standards and their colors, which is the the country standards, the standards of their country into battle. And as you can see here, I'm trying to farm up this group so I can give them a volley, which is happening right now. Boom! And obviously, once again, because the enemy is stationary, they're on mortars. They're using mortars, which not even turn at us. Um, I am doing fire by rank, and we're just gonna watch this wonderful fire by rank. And finally, that is the end of the battle. We've lost 42 men. Um, the, the enemy lost their entire garrison, and we are just gonna please peacefully occupy the province. Obviously, we have we're gonna repair everything, and we are just gonna instantly build another public space because we do need um, public order in this province. We, I am trying my best to, um, another way to solve public order in this game is to have a lot of units just in the province, so Fukushima, I decide to move my general with everyone in, and um, I need, eventually need a navy in this province, which I can build, and on the next, uh, before the turn ends, I decide to send my other units, and because that is really because not Nagita, which is my starting province, has a lot of people happy. So once again, we're going to end the turn, and we are seeing what type of factions we have or, or are dealing with. Avizu, well, not destroyed, but clearly out of the game, we are pretty safe. Well, not safe, but we are expanding our territory. 
as you can see, three more units move into Fukushima. Uh, Fukushima. And what is going on here? I'm trying to recruit a uh, ship. But I decided either to do a uh, King of Prussia class or... Uh, I decided to eventually do a King of Prussia class because it is the cheapest and against Japanese factions with navies that are still in the Sengoku Jedi era. It is really a joke. Historically, um, at this point, the Japanese will modernize, but to make it fun, um, this mod made it. Well, actually, no, I don't. I don't really know this time period. Everything in this time period, but um, um, in the game, the the Japanese Navy or what Navy they do have is represented literally by a single Jedi ships. So every time we're facing a naval battle, we are definitely gonna win. And as you can see, I'm trying to move out my units, um, and I'm just having them move out. I'm going to leave some units, the units that just came here, to hold Fukushima just to give me uh, money. And because I do not want to exempt Fukushima from taxes, and if I do exempt Fukushima from taxes, uh, my economy is not afloat. Once again, um, Nagita has just finished producing Wutenberg infantry, so we're just moving them to Fukushima. And yeah, we're continuing the march. Uh, once again, we have zero public order, which is good. In this game, if you have negative one public order, that can lead to a revolt, especially after two turns. The Aizu, I'm gonna request peace, but they say no. And to be to give you guys uh, where Aizu is, the Aizu is are on a island, not and that is not even close to this place. And our approximate neighbors who are south are Namito and uh, I'm not even gonna pronounce this name, Utusugaima, I think. At this point, you see me doing is getting uh, getting some cheap money. Real quick, I am demanding money, and <laughs> I demand military access for 20 turns for 200, 200 koku, but they reject, so I decide, you know what, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, so I didn't take anything from that that diplomacy. As you can see on the map, the, the, the U faction is right under us, and the Mito are to the right. So we're gonna continuing on. Uh, we re recruited our final unit in Nikita, and that is the line of, uh, life life lifeguards. And for those now are wondering what the heck are lifeguards? Lifeguards are the literally the bodyguards of the king, and is and literally the best infantry in all of Prussia, essentially. Uh, public order is negative one. Which could lead to a revolt, but that doesn't really matter because we do have one turn until it revolts. So, and my li lifeguards are on their way. So, yeah, it's not going to be a problem. Uh, our recruitment is going pretty dang well. Um, the King of Prussia is being built. Uh, in Nagita, we are also, this is the next turn, and in Nagita, we are also building stuff left and right. And before the lifeguards even get there, um, the, the population is already happy. Path is blocked, but path is not really blocked. Um, for the next turn, the next next turn, we can march on the Mito. I mean, the Yuga Soki uh, or something. I've, I'm not good with Japanese. Um, in this, in my capital Nikita, I am producing. Uh, a military advisor and a geisha, and you'll see what the purpose of that later. As you can see, the U faction is allied with the Mito and the Numida, Numata, um, and the Numata are to our to our south. And so I decided not to declare war on the Numida, and I want to go to war with Mito, and that is the reason because the Koga and the Yusu the the one we actually do want to invade are to our direct south, and all of those factions are quite weak. One can argue so is the Numida, but um, Numida is a problem. It's not within my direct range. Also, uh, this is uh, this is basically an agent to be exact, as a military advisor, and basically he just trains your troops. Uh, what is my uh, Geisha doing? Uh, this is a Geisha. She's. It is also an agent. And it's basically used to make the population happy. 
Now, continuing on, we have during the entrance sequence the Mito to um, want a peace reader. And obviously, what I'm gonna say is no. Because it has also a lot of enemies at war of them. And uh, Yusi Yoshiogiyama also declared war, want peace, sorry, with me, and I too reject their demands. Summer. And our ship, our ship is finally being built. Um, five turns has just passed because I'm editing out the turns. No one really wants to see turn by turn basis unless something important happens, in which I do keep you guys informed. I'm going to attack the port, uh, and that's because I do not want the Japanese to spam a navy, because that is a really a big waste of time to deal with their navies. And that is the end of this video. Uh, we're going to assault their castle on the next episode. So, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.